What do you use if you run out of two-cycle oil? Ah, uh, very good question. A lot of people in the Northeast have a two-cycle snowblower or blizzard will appear out of nowhere and they need to make a path out of their home. What to use? Well, a lot of them have actually used conventional motor oil. Yes, car oil. Stuff like a 5W30, 10W40, whatever's laying around the home. And they've had few ill effects. What some have complained about is, you know, smoky operation, a little less power. But for the most part, it works. And they've done this multiple times throughout the life of their snowblower. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing it all the time because you're going to have some side effects. You see, motor oil is not like two-stroke oil. It's not designed to burn up as quick. It has a higher flash point, a higher resistance towards burning. So, therefore, you're going to have a little bit of a carbon buildup in your edge your exhaust system. Not to mention, you have a lot of additives, things like detergents, calcium, boron, all this stuff, which doesn't burn at all. Then... You also have to worry about the whole multi-grade motor oil issue. What am I talking about? Well, a 5W30, the way that works is that you have a bunch of carbon polymer chains. And when the oil heats up, it expands those chains, so that increases the viscosity. It's not really going to be able to do that at a two-cycle engine. And see, a two-cycle engine has a lot of tolerances, very tight tolerances that will actually shear up all those carbon chains and break them down. So what should have been something like a 30 weight, might end up being something like a five weight and not provided with the same level of protection. But once again, just to continue this video, before I get into all the different things you could use as a two stroke oil, I want to point out some sh basics about a two cycle engine. All right, the way it works is that there's generally two different types of two cycle oil you could buy. You have TC and TCW. What's the difference? TC is designed for air cooled engines. Air cooled engines are going to run hotter. All right, a TCW is designed for a water or liquid cooled engine. Therefore, it's going to be a colder running motor. The air cooled oil, the TC, is going to basically have a higher resistance towards burning, a higher flash point. It's going to be able to protect the engine for a longer period of time. TCW is going to burn up quicker and it's going to make a cleaner running engine. But, you know, once again, it's designed optimally for water-cooled engines. But here's the thing. People have been using them interchangeably for years. Some people don't even know there's a difference. So if all you have laid around is the other type of two-cycle oil, feel free to use it. It's still a two-cycle oil. Now then, let me jump right into the three general categories of things you could use. The first category is going to be motor oils. All right, I already talked about most car oils, but I'll go into a little bit more. And then you also have the next category, which is cooking oil. Yes, cooking oil, like the stuff you use in a deep fryer. And then you have the last category, which is your miscellaneous automotive fluids, which has pretty much the best stuff you could use. I'll talk about that soon. All right, motor oils. Here's the thing. Before I dive even into this, I want to give you a little more background on the two-cycle engine operation. There's generally two different ways a two-cycle engine works. You have the pre-mix type of engine, and then you have the oil-ejected engine. With a pre-mix engine, they're pretty forgiving. You could screw up the ratio pretty bad, use a whole bunch of weird stuff in it, it will still tend to run. You see, two-cycle engines, they have very few moving parts. They're very reliable and simple. All right, with a pre-mix engine, you could practically put anything in there. With an oil-ejected engine, you're going to have a little bit more difficulty. You see, you have the luxury of having a separate oil tank and a gas tank, but you also have to worry about the oil being ejected into to the motor. You don't know when the oil ejector fails. You don't know until your engine seizes up. That's not good. But anyway, the point I'm getting at is that with an oil ejection system, sometimes the oil needs to be a little bit leaner, a little bit thinner, have a little less viscosity. All right, and It needs to be able to, in a sense, atomize. It needs to be able to mix with the air and the fuel that's being put into the engine so it could properly protect the engine. But anyway, uh, getting back to motor oils. In the old days, before two-cycle oil was all over the place, years ago, they used to recommend that you use other things, like a straight 30 weight or even a straight 40 weight mixed with the gas to lubricate the engine. Well, nowadays, if you notice it, many two-cycle engines are more along the path of maybe something like a 20 or a 10 weight motor oil. But if you have a non-detergent straight weight oil, you could still use that as a lubricant. You see, non-detergent means it doesn't have all that calcium and boron and junk that's not going to burn. All right, so if you need to, and you, all you have is like some sort of machine oil, like a straight 30 weight, uh, feel free to use that. The nitrogen oil will work fine. Now, the other thing you could use is cooking oil. Yeah, the stuff most people have in their home. In a pinch, you could use this. Cooking oil, in fact, it has some advantages as a lubricant. For many years, people have been taking used old cooking oil, filtering it out, and using it in lawnmowers. Very few ill effects. You see, the thing is that... A cooking oil actually at some times has better anti-wear properties. It has a higher resistance of breakdown at high temperatures. Now, that comes with a side effect of being, you know, basically having a high flash point. And that means you're going to have a little bit of a carbon buildup. But 
in, in warm weather, it will still work well in your engine. And in fact, one of the advantages is it will actually change the exhaust smell of your engine. It would actually smell a little bit like a deep fryer, or more like a barbecue, which is pretty cool. And in fact, a lot of those biodegradable two-cycle oils you see on the market nowadays, they're made majority out of canola oil. And canola oil is basically an offshoot from rapeseed oil, which has been used to lubricate machines for years. So, cooking oil, the one thing I want to warn you against is don't use it in cold temperatures. All right, if you have a snowblower or something like that, make sure that the fuel that you put in it is inside the home at a warm place. It's not going to solidify because this stuff will turn into chunks. It won't work in your engine, all right, if it's really cold out. So when you're done using your snowblower, try to keep it in a place where the heat can be contained. It's not going to be too cold. You don't want to basically put it on ice, all right. So the next category is the category where you're going to find a lot of good stuff, and that's your miscellaneous automotive fluids. All right. Generally, there's two different things I recommend. You have power steering fluid, and then you have automatic transmission fluid, most of the time referred to as ATF. Okay, let me jump right to power steering fluid first. There's three different types. You have your conventional power steering fluid, you have your Honda-type power steering fluid, and then you have your Asian type power steering fluid. The one you want to use is actually the Asian type. The Asian type has the highest viscosity. It's closer to two cycle oil than the others. The next one is hot, and I would kind of advise against using conventional. It's just a little bit thin. But one thing I do want to point out, a good oil you can use is actually the Lucas brand power steering fluid. The Lucas brand power steering fluid actually has a thicker viscosity than all of them. It should provide you with a little bit extra protection. Now, the thing that probably will be very cost effective and the closest thing to two cycle oil you could probably find is automatic transmission fluid. The type I'm particularly talking about because there's multiple out there is Dexrod 3. Dexrod 3 has been used in General Motors cars and other cars for various manufacturers for years. It's a very simple product you can find practically anywhere. Dexrod 3 will work pretty good. Another option you have is the multi-vehicle ATF, which isn't a bad one as well. And then you have Lastly, Ford Type F. Now, it's harder to find Ford Type F because only a few cars used it, but it will still work if you need it to. Now, I'm kind of against using Chrysler ATF 4. It's a little bit thin. And never use Dexrod 6 unless you're going to run straight gas lead in a two-cycle engine. Don't use it. It just has no viscosity whatsoever. Now, the other type of ATF that I should mention is the high-mileage versions of ATF. If you see a high-mileage ATF, it usually comes with a little bit extra viscosity. That's good. That's a little bit more protection. And they do that so that old transmissions don't leak, but the other problem you're going to run into is it has a lot of anti-wear additives. Now, these anti-wear additives, you know, things like zinc and phosphorus, all sorts of stuff, what's it, they don't really burn. So that's going to be a little bit of a disadvantage. But no... Uh, before I close out this video, there's a few more things I have to say. Never run a two-cycle engine on straight gas lead. It might run for a few minutes, all right? But you are essentially damaging the engine, and it will inevitably seize, and that makes it completely useless. So don't do that. The other thing you could do um, is, uh, you know, experiment and look for information about what you're currently using. This is what I do. I recommend that everyone who uses a certain type of product, wherever, whatever it is, and whatever application, search for a material safety data sheet. Also known as an MSDS. The MSDS is going to tell you a lot of important things which you should know, so if you need to find an alternative product, you can find one that's similar. Look at the pour point. All right. The pour point is the temperature at which the liquid will still pour. You want that to be as low as possible so you can have cold temperature operation. The next thing is the flash point. The flash point is essentially the point where it will burn. All right, now, the flash point for a two-cycle oil, you want that to be in the 200-something Fahrenheit range to the low 300-something Fahrenheit range. All right, that's the optimal point for a two-cycle oil. The next thing is the kinematic viscosity. And I have to stress this, it's very important. Kinematic viscosity is essentially what makes the oil the oil. It's the protection. All right. It's usually measured at two temperatures, two common temperatures, one of which is 100 degrees Celsius, which is the same temperature water boils, and then you have 40 degrees Celsius. Now, look at these two viscosities. And uh, you generally for two cycle oil, if you uh, want to find the viscosity at like 100 uh, degrees Celsius, it should be something probably about maybe 8 to the low teens instead of strokes. That's usually what it's given out anyway is set of strokes. Otherwise, you could convert it to other units. But the next category is uh, the 40 degrees Celsius. At 40 degrees Celsius, things are colder, they're thicker. So therefore, uh, the viscosity should be something of like usually at least about 40 set of strokes to up to about 80 set of strokes for a two-cycle oil. Now, um, generally that's it. Those are the key things you need to look for in a two-cycle oil. 
So uh, let me break it down out a little bit of my own personal experiences, a little bit of things that I've tried over the years. Uh, I did a little experiment. I got myself an 8-ounce bottle of 2-cycle oil, uh, TC. It was conventional, not synthetic or anything like that. And I put that in a freezer. And I also got some Ziploc bags and I put in uh, some straight 30-weight motor oil non-detergent. And I also uh, got myself uh, just cheap soybean cooking oil, put that in a Ziploc bag, threw that in the freezer, see what happened. Well, a little bit over 24 hours later, I pulled them all out, and the two-cycle oil, it actually poured. It still poured, and it poured similar to more like a maple syrup, but it worked. Now, for the straight 30 weight, it gelled up. It, was, it, did, it wasn't the way it once was. Now, for the cooking oil, I was very, very disappointed. The cooking oil turned into like some sort of solid lard-like mixture. I couldn't imagine that actually working in a motor. So, once again, that's just my little experiment there, telling you uh, what you could use and what you can't use, some of the problems you might run into. But before I close out this video, I have to tell you a story that I heard. A young man had a moped. All right, He had to get home. It was a little bit over 12 miles to the way home, and his moped had basically no more gas left in the tank. So he pulled off to a store, found some sort of alcohol in the store, found a big old chunk of grease. All right, he bought the both of them, mashed them all up, and he created some sort of a fuel and put it in the tank of his moped and drove the 12 plus miles all the way home. It was a two cycle engine, and it took it and it ran. Once again, just showing the reliability of these very simplistic, very you know reliable engines. All right, so there we go. It, what to use if you run out of oil and, and you, have, you have to get your two-cycle engine going? Um, pretty much you can use a lot of things, but uh, if you have something like an ATF or a power steering fluid, that'll probably work very well. If you don't have that, hell, if you just have some old motor oil laying around your home, that will work too. They're very, very simplistic, very reliable engines. So, yeah, don't run your engine on gasoline. Take care.